Okay, we are done sparging. And as you can see over here, we're just about ready to, yeah, we're just starting to boil. So I'm going to crank the heat because we really want a rolling boil. That's going to really kick up here in a sec. Uh, while this was, uh, or right before the boil, I should say, I added one ounce of Mount Hood hops. And as soon as this gets to a really hardcore rolling boil, which will be any second now, I will add another ounce of Columbus hops. And here we have some Columbus hops. And I'll show you. Oh God, here. Alright, let me take a look at that. Ugh, there we go, get this uh, fixated. Alright, those are some hot pellet. Oh, they smell good. Once again, this is an ounce of dried hot Columbus pellets. And look at that, here we are boiling. We're going to go ahead and add those. Oops, up again. Look at that, huh? That is what you call a vigorous rolling boil. All right, and uh, don't go figure. My thermometer is working now. Okay, that's what you want. You want a hard, hard boil. What we've got here is about nine gallons or so, nine, maybe nine and a half. Uh, we're gonna boil this right down. To uh, when it's all said and done, there's going to be about five left. So we're going to leave the cover off. We're going to let that boil. This is going to be a 60 minute boil. The hops we added just now, those Columbus hops, so will be used to bitter the beer, offset the uh, super sweet wort. We've also got another one ounce of Mount Hood that we'll be adding at 30 minutes left and right at the very very end of the boil we'll be adding some more Mount Hood hops before it goes into the fermenter it's a bit of a hoppy beer it is an IPA after all and here's some more of the hops and so with 60 minutes left there it goes Okay, we've been boiling vigorously for 70 to 75 minutes or so, which is uh, perfect. So now what we are ready to do is get the last batch of hops. One more ounce of Mount Hood at 6.1 alpha. Whoop, we're steaming up again. Keep forgetting about that. Okay, so we've got the last batch of hops in there. We're going to be cooling this down shortly and sending it to the fermenter. Give it one last stirring. There we go. All right, we are set up in our makeshift three-tier system here. One, two, three. And we're ready to uh, open this up. Send it through the counterflow chiller and down to whoop, the fermenter. There we go. Yep. Uh, the water is on, by the way. So what we've got is, once again, through the green hose, the uh, from the faucet on the house goes up through the outer tube on the counterflow chiller and out the yellow. And, uh, you know, go figure the duct tape is holding up and the side with the fitting is not. That's interesting. But in any case, that's the outer tube. And the inner tube, we've got the wort coming out of the boil kettle at uh, just about boiling temperature. It goes through the inner tube around and around and around the counterflow chiller and out through that tube 
down into the fermenter. Very nice. Now in a moment we'll be taking a, uh, a gravity reading to determine exactly uh, what the sugar level of this wort is. And you can see here right about the five gallon mark. Where is it? It's over there. And what I've done is I've taken a sample for our hydrometer reading. This is how we are going to determine the uh, alcohol content of the final product. This is the amount of sugar in solution. In this case, well, it's going to be tough on this camera, but it's, uh, I'll kind of hold it. Eh, you're not going to be able to see it. What that's reading is about 19.2 Play-Doh, which translates to uh, about 10, 1078, 10, uh, 1080, um, which is uh, pretty much right where we want to be. So what that means now is, now that we are transferred to the fermenter, we're going to go ahead and close the valve. Let's shut off. I'm going to take this out. We're all done with that. The uh, duct tape is held up quite nicely, by the way. And now it's time to add our yeast. Uh, typically, for a five gallon batch, uh, you only need one of these, what they call smack packs. This is from Y Yeast. I'm using uh, American Ale 2, uh, 1272 as the number. I like to use two packs for a five gallon batch. Uh, I, I'll actually, I'll use two, two packs for a 10 gallon batch as well, but um, you only need one, um, but having uh, plenty of yeast is a good thing. I have the capability of making a yeast starter, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and pour this right directly into the fermenter. And there's one. Oh yeah, they're hungry and ready to eat. The fermenter right now is sitting just under 70 degrees. We'll get number two here. By the way, whoop, when you uh, when you cut open these packs, the scissors that you use, careful. Uh, make sure that those are sanitized as well. You want everything sanitary at this point. Uh, during the boil, uh, you know, it's not as important because you're boiling off any bad guys. So there is our wort yeast added. Uh, what I'm going to do now off camera, whoop, careful, is uh, aerate this thing. The only time you want oxygen in your beer is at this point because during the boil all the oxygen has been run off so now those uh, the yeast rather needs oxygen to build up their cell walls so that they are strong and healthy and can chow down on all those nice yummy sugars that are in the wort uh, so what you want to do is you want to introduce oxygen back into the wort at this point and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, spin it up basically with a paint mixer and uh, get it all whipped up. You can shake this thing up if you want. Something like that for several minutes. Um, but I use a, uh, a paint mixer to do that. Sanitized of course. Uh, I just, res uh, just got a, uh, a 2 micron stone that uh, I'll be hooking up uh, to some oxygen to directly insert oxygen into the wort. Um, but the hoses that I have for the stone are too small. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way with my paint mixer. And uh, once that's done, we'll be back and ready to store for uh, fermentation. See you soon. Okay, there you have it. We're all cleaned up. We're aerated. You can see how we're uh, We've gotten a big foamy there. Uh, just shy of five gallons. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, but that's all right. 
Uh, I could top it off with uh, some distilled water if I wanted to, but I don't, so that's fine with me. Um, we're all uh, capped off with the airlock. What I like to do is fill the airlock with vodka, just as an added measure of protection. Uh, I figure anything that can live in vodka is welcome to live in my beer. So uh, basically the idea of this is that the CO2 that's created by the uh, yeast as it chows down on that sugar is going to fill up this uh, carboy and escape out through the airlock. Uh, the way that's set up is with the liquid there it'll bubble out and nothing can come in. So uh, our final gravity reading or I should say our original gravity is right around 19, 19.2 Play-Doh which is in that 1078 range is where we wanted to be. I'm hoping to finish off in the 3 to 4 Play-Doh range that would be 1012 to 1016 uh, which will give us about uh, and that's uh, I don't know high sevens to low eight uh, percentage of alcohol. So there you have it, Longboat Rye PA from Drunken Sailor. Ha ha! There it is. And oh, wait a minute. What do we have here? That's right. Just because it's raining doesn't mean we can't barbecue. We've got some uh, balsamic steaks coming up. Won't be filming those, but tomorrow we've got breakfast on the grill as well as a smoked pork uh, roast, which is going to be uh, quite interesting and uh, look to be quite tasty. So in any case, hope all is well. Hope you enjoyed it. Drunken Sailor's Rye IPA. There's our hops over there. If you have any questions or comments, please put them uh, in the section below and have a nice day.